Hey, good morning. We are coming back to the book of 1 Samuel, and today we've moved over into chapter 15. We're coming near the middle of the book, and our study here will take us in verses 1 to 3. Samuel also said to Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint you king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore heed the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I will punish Amalek for what he did to Israel, how he ambushed him on the way. When he came back up from Egypt, now go and attack Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and do not spare them, but kill both man and woman, infant and nursing child, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. So here are some instructions here, and we're just going to take that slice because we'll take a larger slice tomorrow to see what actually happens. There's a command, a command for him. What is he supposed to do? There's a command here that seems a little bit ungospelish, but... The command is to destroy everything, everything. Don't take anything for spoil, destroy everything. Now in the long in the long ages of eternity, you know, God has infinite and perfect knowledge. He knows what's the situation. He knows how people are responding to conscience. You and I don't. And in this rather brief period of time, there is kind of a period of time here in the time of Israel when there are assignments that the people are given, which might seem kind of hard for us, but here's to destroy the Amalekites completely. You can go back and read the history previous to this in the Bible about the Amalekites. God was obviously, I would believe and accept that he's justified in this rather strong assignment to Saul. But I want you to notice that it's going to be destroy everything, no spoil. You shouldn't have any benefit from it here. You should just basically destroy everything down to the last piece. So that's the command. There's no option here for what's going to happen tomorrow morning in our study. Uh, you know, it's important when God gives us a command that we obey it. It's important that when there's a plan for action and God gives that plan for action, he, 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 didn't, he didn't ask Saul for his opinion. He didn't ask you or me or Samuel for our opinion. He gave a direct command to, to Saul, this is what you're supposed to do. And so there's no question, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. The command is clear. It's as, as simple as it could be. And a little bit on the harsh side, it may seem to us not knowing the whole situation as God does. But that's the command for Saul and so there's going to be another test here, a test. Is Saul going to obey the command of the Lord or is Saul going to find some reason, some way to go off and do something else? So that's what we're going to be looking at tomorrow morning, what happens in this case. But I want you to notice that God did not leave him with any ambiguity. God did not leave him with anything here, really, when it's so plain, when it's so clear, when the Bible teaches it so clearly uh, that God makes a clear command and it's taught clearly in Scripture. Guess what? It is a test, a test of obedience. And a test of obedience, when we're talking about the God who created us out of nothing, gave us life from nothing, we didn't earn it, we never earn it, and God is simply giving us freebies. He's simply giving us life. These are not only a test of obedience, but these are a test of, div of love. Do we love our divine creator? Do we love our divine uh, lover who has created us to be part of it, the, the creation? So we're going to find out what Saul does with that here tomorrow morning. But what about us again? Well, when God gives us, again, very clear commands in Scripture, what is our part? Are we supposed to have a big committee? Are we supposed to format some way that we can sort of like like claim we're doing it when we're doing the opposite? Is that what, what God's plan for us is? No. We want to do that as a response of love. So let's be careful that we watch God's plans and do them. And tomorrow morning, we'll see how well Saul does with this. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, many times it's not that the Bible is confusing, it's not that the Bible is difficult, it's not that your commands to us are hard to understand, we're just kind of left in an ambiguous state, we can't figure out what you really asked us, that's not the case. Lord, so many times your commands are so clear, and it's our hearts that are not clear, it's our hearts that have not decided to follow you fully. Bless us and help us, Lord, by helping our hearts be clear undivided, our affections toward you undivided, so that we completely follow in the way that you lead us. Thank you, Lord, that we could ask you for this as we now pray, and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Oh, it would be easy if we could write our own tickets, right? You know, make our own exceptions, write our own rules, and explain away everything that we wanted to do differently than God showed us. But it might be easy, but it's, it's not the plan. So let's do what God shows us and let him take care of the rest. And God be with you today in whatever it is your assignment for the kingdom is this day.